Hi guys, welcome back to George Reads once again, where today we are reading chapter 4 of I'm Telling You They're Aliens by Jeremy Strong. Last time in chapter 3, uh, Rob's new neighbours came over to his house and he had an idea. What if they changed into their alien forms at night time? So this is a chapter on from that, chapter 4. If you haven't seen um, any of the uh, first three chapters of the book, I suggest you go check them out. You don't have to watch them in order, it's fine with me. Um, uh, If you're new, please leave a like and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. So let's move on with I'm Telling You They're Aliens. Chapter 4. Bog Brush. Today's horoscope. New friends bring excitement into your life. Beware of yellow. How I managed to get any sleep, I don't know. But when I got up the next day, I began to realise that this was a problem I could not tackle on my own. I needed help, and the only place I could get help was from school. So, before school started, I went round my playground talking to everyone from my class. Listen, I said, we've got new neighbours and they're creatures from the furthest reaches of space and they're going to invade Earth. We've got to stop them. Will you help me? Not again, said most of them. Rob, you thought aliens were coming six months ago. Let's face it, Rob, the only strange creature living in your street is you. Others just said, hey, great game. Can my friend play as well? I told them it wasn't a game and they looked at me sadly. You mean you really think that there are aliens living next to you? Then they would sigh and walk off with their hands in their pockets. Some people just laughed straight off. Kevin Durbel threw his arms into the air and screamed, Ah! Chicken, look, it's being attacked by aliens! Run for your lives! And he ran around the playground yelling and pulling stupid faces. I reckon Kevin Durbel is about as funny as poo on your shoe. As for everyone else, they seemed more interested in the fact that the school had been broken into overnight and all the computers and TVs had been nicked. No TV to watch, they moaned, as if that it was the end of the world. And all the time I knew how the world really would end if they didn't help me. How many helpers do you think I got? How many brave warriors signed up to fight the aliens and save the world? None. I was going to have to fight them alone. That is, how things stood until lunchtime. Then, Bob Brush turned up. Bob Brush is not her real name, of course. Bob Brush's real name is Marsha, and that's partly how she got her name. You know, Marsh, Bog, they mean the same thing, don't they? So when the other kids, Kevin Durbel mostly, heard that her name was Marsha, they used every bit of imagination in their tiny brains and came up with Bob Brush. I mean, kids can be so inventive sometimes. You could probably tell that I got a bit fed up with nicknames. Chicken licking doesn't exactly send me into ecstasies of delight. Anyhow, at lunchtime, I was standing in the playground by myself, as usual. If I go to stand next to anybody, they usually move away pretty quickly. And I knew that today they all thought I had gone off my trolley completely. When, Bob Rush came wandering over and stood silently next to me. She's bigger than me, a whole head taller, and she's gangly and awkward and has long, thin arms and legs like sticks that she keeps tripping over. I don't suppose I'm giving you a very good impression of her, am I? I'm making her sound weird, but she is a bit like that, tall and thin, with vague eyes, and she's got the big mop of unruly hair, all curls. That's the brush bit, of course, bog brush. And there she was, offering to help. It was going to be me and Bog Brush against the mighty force of the aliens. My heart sank into my boots. My right-hand man was a woman. Well, a girl at any rate. What are they like? She asked, and my spirits gave a small leap. I have to say, a small leap, because after all, she was a girl, and a rather weird one at that. Like me, Bog Brush was a bit of a loner. I remembered my horoscope. A new friend, beware of yellow. The new friend had to be Marsha, and as for the warning, that was so obvious. I think they've got yellow skin, but I haven't seen them properly yet. How do you know they're extraterrestrials? Come back to my house this afternoon and you'll see why. Anyhow, she continued, they won't be aliens. Those things always turn out to be hoaxes. People said they'd found an alien on a beach a few years ago. You know what it was. The dead, decaying body of a giant squid washed up from the bottom of the ocean. 
My new neighbours are not giant squid, I muttered angrily. And besides, they've got stellar markings on their throats. Really? Marsha seemed a fraction more interested. The man and the woman have the same sign. It's a group of stars. Marsha sat down next to me and studied my face carefully. Which group? How am I supposed to know that? She paused, deep in thought. It could be Upsilon Adromade. That's quite a solar system. You mean over planets? Yes. Three planets have been discovered already, maybe more. Trouble is, Upsilon is 44 light years away from Earth. This was astonishing. I mean, Bobrush was weird, but I had no idea she was into astronomy. They'd have to have overcome light speed to get here, and that's supposed to be impossible. Supposed to be, she repeated, although I have my own pet theory on that one. She frowned at her feet. Why do you think there are only four of them? I don't know. I suppose there could be more, spread across other cities, right across the world. A network of aliens preparing... The skin on the back of my neck prickled. I was I was beginning to scare myself. Bogrush glanced down at me and gave a little sigh. You worry too much, she said. Suppose they've come in peace? I shuffled my feet. Bogrush had a point. It just didn't feel right, though. I was certain those aliens were a threat. Perhaps the most evil threat the Earth had ever faced. So why have you decided to help? I asked. I'm bored. Oh, great. That was so encouraging. My only ally had joined up through boredom. I took Brookbrush back to my house after school. Then raised her eyebrows. It was lucky Dad wasn't there. He would certainly have said something really witty, like, got a girlfriend. We went up to my bedroom, pulled a couple of chairs over to the window, and stared at the house over the road. Nothing happened for a while. Mum brought us some drinks and biscuits. Bogrush began to wander around my room, poking her nose into everything. You've got a computer? She said. Ten out of ten. She picked up my medical encyclopedia and began leaving through the section on first aid. Incidentally, have you ever wondered what happens if first aid doesn't work? Is there any such thing as a second aid or a third aid? Or do the doctors and nurses just give up? I mean, it's a bit worrying, isn't it? After a few pages, she turned to me and said it was little wonder why I spent most of my time worrying. If you stop reading stuff like this, you won't fret so much. I like reading that stuff. Listen, do you know what to do if a poisonous snake bites you? No. There you are then. Rob, when did you see last? When did you last see any kind of snake around her? I couldn't answer that one. I was about to ask if she thought there was such a thing as second aid when Norman suddenly appeared outside. Quick, look! Bogrush gazed out of the window. Her lips twisted into a curl. He is weird, she said, and I could have hugged her. I said could have. I didn't say I did. At last, someone seemed to be thinking what I was thinking. And there's his mum, I pointed out. Look, you could see part of the mark. Spooky. Bogrush stared hard. I'd like to get a closer look at that. I should be able to recognise it. Anyhow, I thought you said the skin was yellow. That's when they're in their alien state. At the moment, they're pretending to be humans. When do you think they'll be ETs then? Tonight. I'm sure they slip into their alien condition at night. What do you think we should do? Bogrush turned away from the window. I was hoping you'd have a plan. Not really. I suppose the first thing to do is to prove that they are aliens. And there's only one way to do that. She sat down and fiddled with a pencil. We shall have to get into their house at night and take photos of them in their alien state. That will prove it to everyone. My heart had come to a complete stop. Into their house? Are you mad? We may as well ask them to kill us now. Don't be so wet. It's not like we're going to knock on the door. We sneak in when they're asleep. This idea was pretty mind-blowing. I mean, normally when you make a new friend and ask them around to your house, you listen to music together or maybe play a game on the computer. Bob Rush was suggesting we sneak into somebody else's house in the middle of the night and take snapshots of them. It was fantastically exciting and horrifyingly scary, and it could just work. I nodded slowly. All right, we'll do it, as long as I have time to make my will before we go. Have you got a camera? No. Bob Brush, why suggest it if you haven't got one? Bob Brush lifted her chin, and those vague eyes of hers suddenly went into sharp focus. 
You call me Bob Rush, and I'll call you Chicken Licking, okay? How do you want to play this, Rob? Talk about turning red. I felt like a nude beetroot. Sorry, I muttered. I think my dad's got a camera downstairs. I'll see if I can find it. How do we get into the house? I smiled. This was the easy bit. I've got a key. The last people who lived here gave my parents a spare key so that mum could feed their cat when they went away. We still got it, and I don't think the locks have ever been changed. Marsha and I looked at each other. This plan was becoming a very real thing. We were going to do it. We were going to enter the alien stronghold, and I hadn't even decided what I wanted written on my gravestone. My heart started fluttering again, like a little bird between a cat's jaws. Okay, I said, meet up by the bushes in our front garden at midnight, yeah? Marsha nodded. The colour had drained from her face. I asked if she was scared, and she shook her head, her tight curls bouncing about her face. No way, she said quickly. At the door, she turned back to me. I'm petrified, she said, and vanished down the stairs. I was astonished. I never realised that Bob Rush, sorry, Marsha, had words like petrified in her vocabulary. I had to go and look it up in the dictionary. She was turning out to be a dark horse, or a stone. I was left in my bedroom, thinking. Suddenly, this whole business was turning into something real. I wasn't on my, I wasn't on my own anymore, worrying about alien invaders. Marsha was with me, and we were really doing something. Scary stuff, eh? And that's the end of chapter four. Thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure you tune in for tomorrow's episode, chapter five of I'm Telling You The Aliens by Jamie Strong. I hope you guys are enjoying the series as it progresses and the channel itself. Um, and thank you for watching, and goodbye.